ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम सुनील वर्मा एंड विथ मी इज सुभद्रा रामचंद्रन द हेडलाइंस वोटिंग बिगेन्स फॉर असेंबली इलेक्शन इन पंजाब एंड थर्ड फेज ऑफ असेंबली पोल्स इन उत्तर प्रदेश गुजरात गवर्नमेंट टू अपॉइंट टेन थाउजेंड विजिटिंग टीचर्स इन गवर्नमेंट एंड एडेड प्राइमरी स्कूल टू ओवरकम द शॉर्टेज ऑफ टीचर्स इन द स्टेट इंडिया कोविड वैक्सीनेशन कवरेज क्रॉस इज हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी फाइव क्रोर थर्टी थ्री लैख मार्क यूएस एफ डी ए टू कंसिडर इंडिया को वैक्सीन एज वैक्सीन कैंडिडेट इन अमेरिका लिफ्ट क्लिनिकल होल्ड ऑन भारत बायोटेक्स वैक्सीन एप्लीकेशन वर्ल्ड फेमस खजुराहो डांस फेस्टिवल बिगेन्स टूडे इन मध्य प्रदेश इंडिया विन्स राइट टू होस्ट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री आई ओ सी सेशन इन मुंबई प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेन्द्र मोदी एक्सप्रेसिस हैपीनेस ओवर द डिवेलपमेंट बीसीसीआई अनाउंसेज इंडियाज टी ट्वेंटी इंटरनेशनल एंड टेस्ट स्क्वाड्स फॉर इट्स होम सीरीज अगेंस्ट श्रीलंका स्टार्टिंग फेब्रवरी And third and final T20 international between India and West Indies to be played today in Kolkata. With the new Omicron variant of coronavirus causing concern, we appeal to our listeners to be vigilant and get fully vaccinated, and also help others, including children between 15 and 18 years, to get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask. maintain two gas ki duri for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene for any covid related information and guidance contact national helpline numbers 011 2397 8046 and 1075 and other news in detail voting has begun for third phase of assembly elections in uttar pradesh and single phase assembly polls in punjab In UP polling began at 7 this morning while in Punjab it started at 8 a.m. In both the states polling will conclude at 6 p.m. Elaborate security arrangements have been made to ensure free fair and covid safe polling. In Uttar Pradesh voting is taking place for 59 assembly constituencies spread over 16 districts in the third phase. These districts include Hathras, Eta, Manpuri, Firozabad, Farooqabad कन्नौज इटावा औरैया कानपुर देहात कानपुर नगर झांसी एंड ललितपुर अ टोटल ऑफ 627 हंड्रेड कैंडिडेट्स इंक्लूडिंग नाइन्टी सेवन वीमेन आर इन द फ्रेम दिस फेज नाउ वी गो ओवर लाइव टू आवर कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट सुशील चंद्र तिवारी हुज इन कानपुर सिटी सुशील हाउ इज पोलिंग प्रोग्रेसिंग एंड ऑल्सो टेल अस अबाउट द अरेंजमेंट्स मेड बाय द इलेक्शन कमीशन वेल सुनील आई एम स्टैंडिंग एट द मोतीलाल खेडिया इंटर कॉलेज in kalyanpur constituency of kanpur city uh, this is a model polling booth also uh, despite of the chilly weather in the morning people have started coming out in large numbers to cast their vote at this particular polling booth police personnel and election commission employees are um, asking the uh, voters to follow the social guidelines in view of the covid pandemic uh, the temperature is being checked at the entrance gate and at the entrance of polling booth also. so um, people are wearing mask all kind of uh, covid guidelines are being followed and uh, we can see that uh, because of the chilly weather in the morning the turnout is quite uh, low but it will progress as the day will progress and uh, from here uh, this is uh, kalyanpur constituency and from here the uh, minister in yogi government nilima katyar is contesting on bjp ticket and uh, mr satish nigam from samajwadi party is pitted against her uh, there is also one candidate neha tiwari who is sister of khushi dubey and accused in bikru case so uh, people are seeing tough fight at this particular seat polling started peacefully and uh, especially the senior citizen and women can be seen in uh, quite large numbers uh, reaching at the uh, polling booth sunil what are the security arrangements sushil for this phase of elections well sunil uh, elaborate security arrangements are in place for this phase of elections we all know that the areas where polling is uh, going on they fall in uh, hindi heartland and particularly the some part of bundelkhand and ravines of chambal and yamuna are also in, in this phase of elections more than 8000 uh, battalions of central forces 
have been deployed for uh, peaceful and fair elections and more than 5,000 police personnel of state police have also been deployed on the polling booths. Uh, almost uh, more than 870 areas have been identified as sensitive areas while more than 5,000 polling booths are considered critical. So special security arrangements have been made for security on these places also. Women sub-inspectors, inspectors and women constables have been deployed at pink booths. Almost 170 pink booths are in this phase. So there is security for women also. Uh, so um, these phase of elections are very important. That is why uh, heavy security arrangements have been made to conduct free and fair elections. Sunil. And what is the political scenario in this phase of elections, Sushil? Tell us something about the big wigs. Sunil, the elections in this phase are very crucial for both parties, Samajwadi Party and Bharti Janta Party. But we cannot rule out Bahujan Samaj Party uh, from the scene because we have seen that in 2012 elections and prior to that uh, 2007 elections, BSP performed very well in particularly the Bundelkhand region uh, where polling is going on in this phase and we all know that uh, uh, the central UP is considered to be a Samajwadi party bastion out of the 59 assembly seats which are going to poll in this phase of the 16 districts uh, they are spread in central UP and Bundelkhand area uh, last time BJP swept all the Bundelkhand region and uh, no seat was captured by any opponent parties, but this time Samajwadi Party is giving a tough fight to BJP and we all know that uh, the Samajwadi Party President Daklesh Yadav is contesting from Karhal, so uh, a very interesting fight is going on there also. Many ministers are also in the fray like Ram Naresh Agnihotri, Satish Mahana and uh, Nilima Katyar. Opposition has also fielded very interesting candidates. We should not forget the IPS turn politician Asim Arun from Kannauj seat. He is contesting on BJP uh, BJP ticket. Samajwadi Party is, has given ticket to the leader of Pragatishil Samajwadi Party and uncle of Aglesh Yadav from Jaswant Nagar. Shupal Singh Yadav is contesting from Jaswant Nagar. Neha Tiwari, sister of Khushi Dubey, who is an accused in um, that Vikas Dubey encounter case. So opposition has so raked up that issue also. So very interesting fight is going on uh, at all these seats. Sunil. Thank you for that update, Sushil. In Punjab, voting is taking place for all 117 assembly constituencies in a single phase. A total of 1,304 candidates, including 93 women, are in the fray. Punjab is likely to see a multi-cornered contest. Addressing a press conference in Chandigarh, Punjab Chief Electoral Officer Dr. S. Karuna Raju said, the poll panel has set up 24,740 polling stations across the state. Out of these, 2013 polling centres have been identified as critical. विधान सभा चुनाव 2022 वास्ते तैयारियां मुकम्मल है इस दौरान मेरा अपील यह है सारिया वोटर साहिबा नु जरूर वद तो वद गिनती दे विच आओ वोट करो साडे पंजाब दे विच 24700 बूथां दी असि सेटअप कीता गए पूरे व्यवस्था उथे कोविड दी प्रबंध भी असि कीता हुआ है एंड नाउ वी गो ओवर लाइव टू आवर कोरेस्पोंडेंट अश्विनी कुमार शर्मा हु इज इन जीरकपुर अश्विनी हाउ इज पोलिंग प्रोग्रेसिंग देयर Sunil, I am here outside the polling station. Some voters have gone inside to poll their votes. More people are seen coming towards the polling station. After thermal scanning, they are being allowed to enter inside. The polling is going on peacefully. Sunil. And tell us about security arrangements for the polling, Ashwini. Sunil, full security arrangements are there. The Jawans of Central Armed Police Forces and Punjab Police have been deployed who are keeping eye on all the people who are coming to the police station. The polling is going on peacefully. Sunil. Thank you so much for that update, Ashwani. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has appealed voters to vote in large numbers in the Punjab elections and the third phase of assembly polls in Uttar Pradesh, which are being held today. In a tweet, Mr. Modi called upon people, particularly the youth, as well as first-time voters to exercise their franchise in large numbers. 
Senior BJP leader and Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address public meetings at Hardoi and Unnao in Uttar Pradesh today. BJP President Jagat Prakash Nadda will address public meetings at Shravasti, Balrampur and Siddharth Nagar in Uttar Pradesh today. Senior BJP leader and Defence Minister Rajnath Singh will address public meetings at Amethi, Pratapgarh and Lucknow today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi yesterday met members of the Sikh Hindu delegation from Afghanistan at his residence in New Delhi. They thanked the Prime Minister for bringing Sikhs and Hindus safely to India from Afghanistan. Mr Modi told them that India is their home. He talked about the difficulties faced by them in Afghanistan and the help provided by the government to bring them to India safely. He also talked about the significance of the Citizenship Amendment Act and its benefits for the community. Gujarat government has decided to appoint 10,000 visiting teachers in government as well as granted primary schools to overcome the shortage of teachers in the state. The decision has been taken ahead of resumption of offline education in schools from tomorrow and also to ensure that offline education does not get affected due to non-availability of teachers in primary schools following COVID. The government has allocated 10.50 crore rupees to fill the vacant posts. The offline education will resume in the state in 100% capacity from tomorrow. Ladakh Lieutenant Governor R.K. Mathur met Information and Broadcasting Secretary Apurva Chandra in New Delhi. During the meeting, both discussed strengthening of Doordarshan and All India Radio Kendras in Ladakh region and the delivery of Ladakh Ladakhi content for maximum duration. They also discussed provision for DD free dish. TV, AM, FM radios to households in border areas. LG Mathur underlined the importance of strengthening radio services in Ladakh due to its importance, especially for nomads residing in Changtang region. LG Mathur and Apurv Chandra also discussed conducting the second edition of the Himalayan Film Festival. Mr. Mathur appealed to INB Ministry help in installing two extra screens at the Sindhu Sanskriti Kendra Auditorium for the film festival and other infrastructure. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar held a series of one-to-one -one meetings with ministers from Europe, Asia and other parts of the world on the sidelines of the Munich Security Conference in Germany on Saturday. A report. The External Affairs Minister held meetings with foreign ministers of Romania, Mongolia and Sweden and other delegates who are attending the conference. During a bilateral meeting with his Romanian counterpart Bogdan RSQ, Dr. Jeshankar held discussions on issues of mobility, cyber, space, defense, disaster resilience and health. With Swedish Foreign Minister Anne Linde, the, the External Affairs Minister noted the progress in their bilateral cooperation and discussed respective national security challenges. Dr. Jeshankar and his Mongolian counterpart Pat Setsek Mbatmunk discussed cooperation in various issues including energy, IT and coal sectors. The External Affairs Minister also met with members of the European Parliament and held discussions on transparency, reliable supply chains and the world order. He reiterated commitment for stronger India-EU cooperation. Earlier in a meeting with Singapore Defence Minister Ang Yang Khan, Dr. Jay Shankar discussed bilateral and ASEAN-related defence cooperation. Swati Rakheja, AIR News. Air India will operate three flights between India and Ukraine on the 22nd, 24th and 26th of this month. Air India said seats are available on these flights and booking is open through Air India booking offices, website, call center and authorized travel agents. You are listening to the morning news and all India radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Voting begins for assembly elections in Punjab and third phase of assembly polls in Uttar Pradesh. Gujarat government to appoint 10,000 visiting teachers in government and aided primary schools to overcome the shortage of teachers in the state. India's COVID vaccination coverage crosses 175 crore, 33 lakh mark. U.S. FDA to consider India's co-vaccine as vaccine candidate in America. Lifts clinical hold on Bharat Biotech's vaccine application. World-famous Hajiraho Dance Festival begins today in Madhya Pradesh. India wins right to host 2023 IOC session in Mumbai. Prime Minister Narendra Modi expresses happiness over the development. BCCI announces India's T20 international and test squads for its home series against Sri Lanka starting February 24. And third and final T20 international between India and West Indies to be played today in Kolkata. For quick news updates, round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. 
अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो आरोप आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो India's COVID vaccination coverage has crossed 175 crore 33 lakh mark. The health ministry said more than 27 lakh 47 thousand vaccine doses were administered yesterday. More than 1 crore 89 lakh precaution doses for the identified categories of beneficiaries like healthcare workers, frontline workers, and people over 60 years have been administered so far. Bharat Biotech's Covaxin. will be evaluated as a covid-19 vaccine candidate in the united states the company said us food and drug administration fda has lifted its clinical hold on covaxin oxygen is co-developing covaxin for covid-19 in the us and canada covaxin is india's indigenous covid-19 vaccine but by bharat biotech and has been developed in collaboration with the indian council of medical research icmr and National Institute of Virology NIV it has been developed using whole virion inactivated viro cell derived platform technology US talking to AIR news covid working group chairman dr nk arora said it is great uh, happiness as well as satisfaction to hear that uh, fda the key agency in united states of america has considered o vaccine a vaccine which is completely developed and manufactured in india it again reemphasizes the point that indian science and technology is second to none and is now recognized world over As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence, a series of events is being organized by the government as part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav to commemorate the occasion as a Jan Utsav. All India Radio News brings its listeners a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history. The quiz is being conducted every Monday and Tuesday in Morning News. The next question of Amrit Mahotsav quiz will be shared with listeners on Monday. And now let's listen to our special program Azadi Ka Safar highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News Birth of a Nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of this struggle every day. The 20th of February 1868 was the day when the paper Amrit Bazar Patrika was first published in undivided Bengal's Jessore district. The paper was published by two brothers, Shishir Ghosh and Motilal Ghosh. In 1871 the paper shifted its base to Kolkata its sharp criticism of the british was making the colonial government uncomfortable In 1878 the british enacted a draconian law called the vernacular press act to curtail criticism of the government in the local language press one publication that refused to stop was the amrit bazar patrika The day after the act was promulgated the newspaper started publishing only in English and continued to challenge the colonial government the legendary Amrit Bazar Patrika and its journalists were at the forefront of India's struggle for independence and early proponents of the concept of press freedom in addition to this the paper raised money to fight sedition cases against Pal Gangadhar Tilak and strongly objected to Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose's expulsion from the then Calcutta's Presidency College After the retirement of Shishir Ghosh his son Tushar Kanti Ghosh took over in 1931 he was arrested for criticizing the biased 
judicial system of the British. In 1946, the newspaper left its front page blank for three days to oppose the horrific communal violence that had engulfed Kolkata ahead of the partition of India. The paper finally shut its press in 1991 after a run of 123 years. <laughs> And it was on the 20th of February 1947 that Clement Attlee declared that the British would quit India by June 1948. On February 20th, 1947, British Prime Minister Clement Attlee announced in the House of Commons the decision of the British government to transfer power to responsible Indian hands by a date not later than June 30th, 1948. The Prime Minister and the Secretary of State who made an identical statement in the House of Lords expressed the government's regret that continuing differences among the Indian parties prevented the transfer of power His Majesty's government will have to consider to whom the powers of the central government in British India should be handed over on due date whether as a whole to some form of central government for British India or in some areas to the existing provincial governments or in such other ways as may seem most reasonable and in the best interests of the indian people the arrival of mount patton as viceroy with orders to wind up what remained of the british administration in the next 14 months gave a sharper edge to the british government's purpose however On the 3rd of June 1947, Mountbatten declared that the British would leave India sooner on the 15th of August 1947. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. President Ramnath Govind will review the Indian Navy's fleet at the Presidential Fleet Review tomorrow. The smart city Vishakhapatnam is fully decked up for Presidential Fleet Review, being hosted by Eastern Naval Command. The review will also commemorate India's 75th year of independence. The Navy has declared the theme of the event as India Navy 75 years on service of the nation. We spoke to Rear Admiral Sanjay Bhalla, flag officer commanding Eastern Fleet about the presidential fleet review. During the review, the president will be embarked on INS Sumitra and he shall review 44 ships of the Indian Navy, Coast Guard, Shipping Corporation of India and NIOT in four columns. The crew will man the side and salute with the traditional three jets and act also termed as the man and chair ship. The president will also witness a composite fly pass and a colorful parade of sail. This is the third review of Ishaka Patnam, the last one being the international fleet review in 2016. The president's fleet review this year is special as it celebrates and commemorates the 75th year of India's independence. Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. Jai Hind. In Madhya Pradesh, the 48th Khajuraho Dance Festival will begin today. The week-long festival will conclude on the 26th of this month. More from our correspondent. Renowned artists from across the country and the world will perform at the festival, which will be inaugurated by Madhya Pradesh Governor Mangu Bhai Patel. The festival will be held beside the famous Khajuraho group of temples, which is a world heritage site. It will showcase the cultural landscape of Indian dance styles, art, and travel-related exhibitions. During the event, the National Kalidas Award will be presented to eminent dancers for the years 2019-20 and 2020-21. The Madhya Pradesh State Rupankar Kala Award will also be presented during the festival. Pooja P. Vardhan, AIR News, Bhopal. India won the right to host the 2023 IOC session in Mumbai. This will be the second time India hosts an IOC session, having done so in 1983 in New Delhi. India won the bid and opposed at the 139th IOC session that was held in Beijing, China, on the sidelines of the Winter Olympics. 
ओलंपिक गोल्ड मेडलिस्ट अभिनव बिंद्रा आईओसी मेंबर नीता अंबानी आईओए प्रेसिडेंट नरेंद्र भत्रा एंड स्पोर्ट्स मिनिस्टर अनुराग ठाकुर प्रेजेंटेड इंडिया प्रपोजल फॉर द होस्टिंग राइट्स एट दिस ईयर आईओसी सेशन Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed happiness that India has been chosen to host the 2023 International Olympic Committee session. In a tweet, Mr. Modi expressed confidence that it will be a memorable IOC session and will lead to positive outcomes for world sports. In cricket, the third and final T20 International of the three-match series between India and West Indies will be played at Eden Gardens, Kolkata today. The match begins at 7 p.m. Having won the first match comfortably by 6 wickets and the second one a close encounter by only 8 runs the men in blue are charged up to achieve the hat trick of sweeps under the captainship of Rohit Sharma earlier Rohit led India to 3-0 series win over New Zealand and T20Is and West Indies in ODIs to begin his full time captaincy career for India The BCCI has announced India's T20 international test squads for its home series against Sri Lanka starting February 24. Rohit Sharma will lead the side in both formats while Jasprit Bhumrah has been named as deputy, said chairman of selectors Chetan Sharma. Senior India test batsman Cheteshwar Pujara and Ajinkya Rahane have been dropped from the squad after recurring poor form. Senior pacer Ishant Sharma and wicketkeeper Rudiman Saha have also been omitted from the side. And now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. The national capital Delhi is likely to experience strong surface winds during day time. Mumbai had fog in the morning and will have clear sky later. Chennai is likely to have partly cloudy sky and Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky with the possibility of moderate rain. Srinagar will have mainly clear sky. Jammu will ha- also have mainly clear sky. Leh is likely to have partly cloudy sky. The minimum and maximum temperatures will hover between minus 10 and 3 degrees Celsius. Gilgit will have partly cloudy sky. Muzaffarabad will have mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy later. Puducherry will have partly cloudy sky with minimum temperature of 21 degrees Celsius and the maximum temperature of 31 degrees. Bushaka Patnam will have partly cloudy sky with haze. Hyderabad will have fog in the morning and partly cloudy sky later. Tiruvannandapuram will have partly cloudy sky. Guwahati will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. Imphal will have generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain. Shillong will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. Aizwal will have generally cloudy sky with light rain as well. The minimum temperature was 8 degrees and the maximum will be around 20. Kohima will have generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain. Itanagar will have generally cloudy sky. Gangtok will have thunderstorm with rain. And now an overview of today's newspapers. Punjab all set to cast its vote today in four cornered contest. Headlines the Asian Age referring to the assembly polls today in the state. Battle for UP enters testing phase today is a headline in Sunday Pioneer referring to the third phase of elections in the state. In the Sun Times quote Ukraine's foreign minister as saying that the country was preparing for all scenarios as Russia yesterday test fired nuclear capable missiles. Former NSC chief Chitra Ramakrishna has told CBI to ask the National Stock Exchange why her laptop and other devices were destroyed as e-waste writes the Hindu business line. Board knew of a misconduct but let her resign with glowing praise, reports the Sunday Express. 2,000 Indian students left in lurch in Canada as three colleges shut shop, reports Sunday Pioneer. Indian High Commission cautioned students to verify credentials of colleges before paying fee, writes the paper. And finally, structural audit on four more Gurugram towers found unsafe by IIT Delhi in Chintal's Paradiso Housing Society, reports the Sunday Tribune. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Voting begins for assembly elections in Punjab and third phase of assembly polls in Uttar Pradesh. Gujarat government to appoint 10,000 visiting teachers in government and aided primary schools to overcome the shortage of teachers in the state. India's COVID vaccination coverage crosses 175 crores 33 lakh mark. US FDA to consider India's Covaxin as vaccine candidate in America lifts clinical hold on Bharat Biotech's vaccine application. World famous Kajuraho Dance Festival begins today in Madhya Pradesh. India wins right to host 2023 IOC session in Mumbai. Prime Minister Narendra Modi expresses happiness over the development. BCCI announces India's T20 international and test squads for its home series against Sri Lanka starting February the 24th. 
and third and final T20 international between India and West Indies to be played today in Kolkata. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.